the animated box widget from Jet Elements from Croker Block for Elementor Free and Pro gives you the opportunity to showcase important content. I call it a flip card. So you have one side, it flips to another side, but the animated box widget has gotten a few upgrades in the last few years at Croker Block. And now it includes peel and scratch. And I'll show you a few examples and then we'll go in to Elementor, have a look at how it works. This is the very standard flip box that we are used to. And you have content on the front, you have icon, you have text, heading and paragraph, and you have control over the background, whether you want it to be an image or a color or a gradient. A few more examples. This will require a cue to tell the user that they need to actually go ahead and scratch it. Have a look at this Halloween sale. It says scratch, and then with the cursor, it reveals an image in the background. So you have two very similar images, one with a different effect, and then will act as a scratch pad. Same here, let's scratch some more. And you can see, okay, even we take our clothes off. That's an interesting one. Here's a typical scratch card. This is great to get people to interact with your site. Apart from that, you also have the peel effect. So here we have an Oktoberfest beer festival, and then with this little tooltip that says peel, grab it and I peel and it gives me a 20% off. Same here. And then the last effect that we have a few examples of is the slide effect. This is very useful if you have a promo, otherwise it's just gimmicky. But look here, swipe right to take bonus. Yay, 20% off. Buy one. To learn more about all the other plugins in the Jet Elements for Elementor Free and Pro, and if you don't have Elementor Pro, Jet Elements give you all the pro you will ever need. There's a link in the description below. Also make sure you subscribe to this channel as we'll be covering everything CrocoBlock and Jet and Elementor. Let's go in to Elementor and have a look at what we do with the animated box. From the sidebar to the widgets, we look for animated box. Click, hold and drag. And it brings in a flip box for us by default. And you can see it's even named flip box there. You have the current at default. Or if you want to apply a template that you have created, you can grab that from your template library. Let's bring in an icon to see how that will look. A little bell as a reminder. And then title, my own title, my own title, and then subtitle, a new you. And then we have a little description there. The backside, if I select that automatically, it switches. Very nice, I don't have to hover over it every time to see what is on the back. Again, you have that functionality to go default or go to template. We can add another icon here, no need for that. And we have, let's say, get your discount. Valid until August 2022. And you have again an opportunity here to have a description. One thing that is included in the flip box on the back, but not on the front, is button, a link, a call to action. So grab it now. And then you will put your button link in here. And if it doesn't appear, just throw in a hashtag and the button will pop up. That is your front side and your back side content. Very quickly to do that. And actually, my English teacher will scream blue murder if she heard me saying backside. It's only the back content. Backside is your butt. Here you have control over height and it is not automatic. So if your content gets a little too squashed, come in here and set it. And you also have over tablet and then also for your mobile display. Appreciate the responsiveness. Switch type, hover, click, toggle button, scratch, paper fold, peel, and slide out. Now hover is what we do when you just hover over it and then it will switch. Click, you understand? I click on it and then it will flip. Toggle button gives us a little label here in the top right hand corner, which you will click on and then you have a close again. For the scratch, this is not a flip box, but it's more like a reveal. And unfortunately, I cannot simulate this scratch. You saw that the moment you do that, you actually drag the widget around, paper fold, peel, and slide out. 
Let's put it on paper fold because I don't remember seeing that in the demos. Update and let's go preview it on the front end and see what paper fold will do for us. You still have the front, you still have the back. Now you scratch out the front and you will reveal the back. See, and paper fold and I, okay, so drag and drag it out and reveal. Again, when you use these kind of effects, make sure that you add there a little tool tip to tell people, hey, you need to drag this thing to the left. And I guess it's probably up and down and right. Yes, paper, paper fold direction. Paper fold direction, left, top, right, and bottom. And you can add your HTML tags and your subtitle HTML tags here as well. To achieve this kind of effect where we saw the scratch like so, I would recommend that you build it out either as a template or you build it out in a photo graphic editing software. You make two copies of it, one just the brains and one with the brains with the text. And then when you are in Elementor using the animated box, you put them as templates so that you can call them up as a template here and then one for the front and the other one for the back. Let's just go back to default and look at styling. And I don't think that this is going to surprise you if you are familiar with Elementor. You have full control here over everything, all the colors, how the back looks and how it behaves. For all of them, you will see there's a front and then there's a back. Unfortunately, the back does not automatically switch. So I've put it back on click. And when I select back, I will click on it. And now I can work with the back. Content alignment, top and bottom. We don't see any changes here because it's already taking up the majority of the content space we have. Background type, you have padding if you want to add more padding to it, and then border radius. Overlay, that is your background, and then the order. You can set the icon, which I don't see here. Let's go to the front. Icon, you can set it as a second priority, and then your content, you move to the top like so. And you do that by one and two. One goes at the top, and two goes at the bottom. And if both are set to one, then icon will be at the top. And then you have the toggle button, the one if you're working with that little toggle icon that appears there in the top right hand corner. Controls over your icon, all the settings that you can think of, the size of the icon, your box size, make that a little bit bigger, basically applies margin all around. And then you can change the colors of the icon. Title, all the topography choices you have, alignment, but that's a little bit weird. Unless you're putting everything to the left or to the right, then you can do that. Remember to add some padding, change out the title. And if you need more space, you can go to the margin, delink it. And at the bottom, let's put in there 20 pixels to give it a little bit more of separation. Same for the subtitle, everything here exactly the same as you would find for the title. And then for your description, let's make the font a little bit bigger. Go to typography and put our font on 16. That's a little bit better. You'll notice that even though we have padding for the entire card, you can also apply padding individually for these items. Let's give our description padding on the right and the left. I'll give it 35 on the right and then 35 on the left. Oops, let's put in 35 again and also percentage. If you want to add more with percentage, we have to type it in again. So let's put in 35. So only 30% left there in the middle. That's really small. So let's try 2020 gives us 60%. And then more margin at the bottom. But if you're going to talk about space at the top and the bottom, rather go to general. And then we look at the padding over here. And let's add uniform padding of 25 pixels all around. Nothing changed much. Let's increase that to 35. And then I will delink it and give the top a little bit more. Let's make that 50. And then the bottom also 50. You will note, and this is what I mentioned, that the height of this cart is set independently. And as you add padding and as you grow things inside of these elements, 
it will not stretch the flip card. In that case, you have to click back to content, go to settings, and here you will set the height and you will see now as I increase it, things look a little bit better. And then remember, also make those changes for your back. Hop on over to style and last one we look at is at the bottom and that is the action button. And this will only appear on the back of this animated box. And that's why it flips automatically. Again, you have control over the alignment as well if you want to add an icon for it. Let's grab an icon, another little bell. And you can change the icon size, the position. And let's add margin for that button. And I think we'll put that on the left around 15. That's basically the space. And then margin for the entire button at the top. D-link. And I'll put in 35. Looks much better. Color for normal and your hover state can all be applied here. And that, in a jiffy, is the animated box.